This video demos the basics of importing content from an Excel workbook into Polarian, creating trackable and manageable artifacts from worksheet content. Here's an Excel worksheet that contains some requirements. Now this is a super simple example, but we built and tested Excel import using actual complex Excel documents provided by several of our enterprise customers to make sure it met their needs, so it'll probably meet yours as well. Let's look briefly at the columns. They're named a bit strangely on purpose for reasons we'll see a bit later. RecNum, well, that's some kind of identifier, maybe for a legacy file tracking system or something like that. Requirement gives a brief synopsis of what the requirement is. Priority is the legacy prioritization scheme. Notes provide some detail about the requirement. Approved obviously tells if the requirement is approved yet. Comments is, of course, just for some comments. And finally, ZUG, or ZUG factor. Well, who knows? It could be a government regulation, or an industry standard, or just an arbitrary code for boss satisfaction level. Whatever it represents, it's data that needs to be tracked with each requirement, and so Polarian had better be able to do that. Let's try importing this sheet into Polarian. There are two main scenarios for importing Excel content and creating Polarian work items. You can import into a Polarian live doc document or directly into the integrated tracker. Your choice really depends on whether your team prefers a document style environment or is okay working with tools in a data driven environment. We're assuming you've already created a project. If not, well, we have a video on how to do that. Start in the work items topic. Depending on the project template and current progress, you may or may not see some work items in the table. In the Table tab, click Operations, then choose Import. We want to import an Excel workbook, so I'll choose that format. At this point, there are no import configurations for this project, so we can skip this field, but we'll talk more about it later on. For now, we just need to go get the Excel file to import. Our file uploads, but nothing is saved in Polarian yet. First, we need to tell it how to import the content to create trackable, manageable artifacts, which we call work items. First, we choose which worksheet to import. This workbook contains two sheets, and we want the requirements sheet. Notice that Polarian thinks the first row is a header row, and so it checked that flag. If we glance over at Excel, we see that this is correct. We need to tell Polarian where to start looking for work item data, in this case, some requirements. Polarian thinks it's cell A2, and in this case that's correct. If it were not, we could specify which cell to start reading from. We started this process from the tracker, so by default new work items will be created there. However, let's say our requirements people are accustomed to work with documents. Not a problem. We just choose that import option now. Our project has a specification space, and since we're importing requirements, we'll import there and provide a name for the target document. So far, so good. Now we tell Polarian how to import the Excel content, and we're going to look at a very simple scenario for this. Just keep in mind that you can specify simple to complex rules to handle just about any content you might have. We're importing requirements, so we select that as the type we want the importer to create. The types are specified in our project configuration. To keep things simple for now, we'll say always, but remember that creating requirements from the content could be based on some conditions. If our worksheet had both requirements and test cases, we would need to set up rule conditions that would import just the requirements. Now we need to map Excel columns to Polarian work item fields. Again, this simple example and with very few columns. Recall that we said RecNum is an identifier for the legacy system. Polarian takes care of assigning IDs to work items, so we can safely skip this column and the importer will ignore it. The requirement column of our sheet actually corresponds to the standard title field of Polarian work items. The column could have been named title as well. I named it a bit weirdly just to illustrate that it doesn't matter what semantics you may already have, you can still easily map them into Polarian. The same situation with priority. Polarian actually has a priority field and we could use it here, but it actually corresponds better to Polarian's severity field and mapping it that way leaves us free to set priority for items having the same severity. Much more robust planning and management than we had with the Excel sheet. 
When I select severity as the target field, I can specify which value of the sheet column corresponds to which field value. The drop-down shows the values configured for this project. So let's say Sheets Priority 1 corresponds to Project Severity Level Must Have, and Sheet Priority 2 to the Projects Should Have. The Notes column again illustrates how easily we can handle semantic differences. If we look at the Excel sheet, we see that Notes is really the description of the requirements, so we'll map it to the standard Description field in Polarian. The Approved column of the sheet tells whether the requirement is approved or not. Now this is interesting because the data here is binary, yes or no. Fine as far as it goes, but Polarian's workflow is much more robust. If a requirement is approved, it moves on to one step in the workflow. If it's not, it moves to a different step. We can get our requirements into Polarian's workflow quite easily by mapping approved to the status field. Again, we can map sheet values to configured field values. So let's say if a requirement has a yes value in the approved column, meaning the requirement is already approved, the importer will set the Polarian work item field to a value approved. If there's no in the worksheet column, then status will be set to draft. From there, each imported requirement will move appropriately through the project workflow in Polarian. The comments column is a straight map to Polarian's comments. So let's identify any existing comments here as being from the import. That brings us to our silly zug factor. Can we map that to some work item field to keep the value with the relevant requirement? The answer is yes, provided that the project configuration has been modified to define a custom field applicable to this work item type. Now our project has been so configured, therefore we can map the zug factor column to the zug factor custom field. If we ran into a blocker here because there's not an appropriate target field, we could cancel the import, create the custom field in the project, and start again. After the field mapping, we can consider structure if the source worksheet defines some structural hierarchy. You can see there are a couple of options for importing structure. If there's a hierarchy in the source file, work items in Polarian will be created with appropriate links and parent-child link roles. Our source sheet has hierarchy defined by indentation in the requirement column, so I'll just map it that way. We now have an import rule that should import the way we want, and we can confirm that before we commit to the import using preview. Our nice polar bear mascot goes away, and we can see what the result will look like after we actually do the import. But before we do the import, let's quickly look at one important feature that can save you a lot of time. Let's say we have another Excel sheet to import that's exactly like the sheet we're importing here, but that contains requirements for a different component. When we import that, it will obviously save time if we could just reuse the import rule we took the time to work out. The more complex the rule, the more this matters. Well, we can reuse it if we do a quick save of the rule we just defined. Click this gear icon, choose Save, and we'll create a new import configuration. This will apply only in the context of this project, so I'll select Project, and I'll name it Coffee Requirements. And now all similar Excel-based requirements can use our same rules. After the import, the newly created document opens in the document editor. Check out our series of videos on Polarian documents to learn more about how to work with them. Let's wrap up with a quick look at reusing the import configuration we just saved. Here we have another Excel sheet with the same columns, same structure via indents, and importing it will be a snap now. Again, start in Work Items, click Operations, Import. I select to import from Excel and choose the import configuration that we saved during the last import and go and grab the Excel file. You can see here when the file uploads and we do the preview that it imports exactly the same way as the first file. We hope this video will help you get started working with Polarian's Excel import feature. 
Use the form below to give us any feedback you may have or drop us an email at info at polarion.com. <laughs>